Hey everybody. So this particular research paper is called Model as Loss, a Self-Consistent Training Paradigm, and it's put out by Logitech. And this particular research paper caught my interest very specifically because I have seen and can back up 100% what this research paper goes into and like um, what it says. I have have first-hand experience with it. My first-hand experience is behind an NDA, so I haven't been able to talk about it. I haven't had any reason to violate the NDA or anything like that. Like, I'm like, uh, who would believe me anyway, right? So, so uh, here it is, though, uh, via Logitech, and it's it's uh, their method, right? So uh, let's talk about Logitech's method within this model as a loss, a self-consistent training paradigm. So very specifically, uh, this paradigm is is really cool and very straightforward and very simplistic in what it does overall, right? So what they do is they train the encoder as the like to detect and create the loss function, and so the encoder becomes uh, what like the gradient essentially what what measures the gradient, <laughs> and and the encoder does uh, all of the work, right? And then like uh, and that's simplistically what it is so like it's a two-step training process step number one is that you would train it uh, on the data set as you normally would and then step number two is, is that you train the encoder as the loss function itself and then so how do you do that in this instance they're training it it's logitech right <laughs> so uh, they're doing this and they discovered this via audio and then so uh, their method here is audio and then they take uh, spectrograms like what we're seeing here and then of this audio, uh, and then they're able. So what they do is a lot of the methods that I've talked about um, in various different ways on this channel, right? So they essentially they they take the baseline, like the baseline data, uh, which is audio in this instance, and then so audio is is waves, right? Yeah. And then so uh, they take that, and then they enhance it by just removing noise, uh, and then like uh, running it through like. So you train the model on, on the data set. The model gets a um, uh, creates an abstraction of that, that uh, and then that is what you use as your next step. So you feed that abstraction to the next model, which is enhancement one, and then uh, you feed that model's enhancement to the next model, that model's enhancement to the next model, etc. And then they do that. 10 enhancements and 100 advancements uh, and then what you can see is is that uh, it, that uh, works right you're able to uh, denoise uh, based off of that and then they're able to come up with a method uh, that is able to to denoise and it utilizes utilizes uh, short time Fourier transforms STFTs it's and, and uh, FFTs all around for this method so um, trying to stick to what I know I should be able to say around this. <laughs> and then so uh, what I know I can 100% say around this is, is that this uh, particular research paper is very interesting. And then so their entire method that they lay it out to is audio, right? So I'm going to stick 100% to audio uh, within this. And then the only thing that I'll say around that and outside of that is, is that uh, to me, uh, my hypothesis around these things, my experiments around these things is that um, if you can do it with one modality, you can do it with all modalities. Uh, it's not just restricted to audio. Uh, and then so um, this like uh, spectrogram analysis, Fourier transforms, etc. Uh, what if you could do that with all different types of data sets? And then what if it's all just like, you know, platonic forms and what I talk, what I've been talking about uh, extensively and a lot on this channel when it comes to topological geometry, right? This all boils down to the topological geometry of digital spaces of of uh, this, like this. Is, so what we're looking at here is an actual spectrogram, right? Like this spectrogram is real; it is not imaginary. It is not something that is like just poofed into existence. This is an, like a, a, an actual spectrogram, and then we can prove it here. Like so, when when we feed this through all we do is we're just feeding this this spectrogram right which is again an abstraction so we're just feeding the abstraction through to the model and i do that 100 times and it does enhance it like it, there there is 100 percent something there that is actually being read uh utilized trained off of etc like that is without question or else this method wouldn't work right <laughs> and, and 
I say that and I get into that because I still, to this day, like, uh, these are the most prominent discussions that I have around this, right? Like a lot of people want to like uh, poo-poo this methodology, poo-poo kind of what I'm saying overall within this, uh, et cetera, right? At this point, it's um, Logitech. It's not me. <laughs> it's Logitech. It's MIT. It's Princeton. It's Stanford. Uh, it's uh, I get that this is new and cutting edge math and that this is weird and counterintuitive, right? So I like, I didn't go into this and, and, and like my, uh, first thoughts were like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on like talking about crazy stuff about digital spaces uh, and the topology of digital spaces, right? Like, I'm just going to like narrow pick out of it, like pick all of the crazy theories out of a hat. That's the one that I pick, right? Uh, it's, uh, I went into it like a blank slate, tabula rasa. I know absolutely nothing about what is going on here. I'm just going to investigate down the path that is uh, what I think is the path. And then uh, that led me to other people that have gone down that path and then research. And then that's how I've been able to uh, go through and, and learn more and, and a lot about these things. And then like I have... Um, a plethora of self-validation around these concepts from like foremost experts in the world. <laughs> like again, like I have some NDAs around this and I don't, I'm still respectful of them. Like there's no reason not to be. Uh, and then so uh, within that, like I don't want to get too deep in, into that overall beyond what I've stated within this. But then so let's again go back to this paper model as a loss, a self-consistent training paradigm. Uh, the interesting thing within this, right, and and what is uh, interesting to me within this is that their their method is is that they're uh, training the encoder very specifically on this, and then so um, if you're familiar with like um, my PFAT function, uh, it's all about this, right? Like I like this um, encoder style training, and then that's kind of the like another discussion that I get into with people. So uh, I'll I'll. Uh, bring up a research paper like this, uh, and then there'll be a discussion around like a topological geometry of digital spaces. I'll say, hey, here's a recent paper that came out that proves uh, or back up, backs up like uh, what, you know, kind of like theories behind topology of digital spaces. And this is just the most recent one and most recent example. So it's the most top of mind. So I send this one to the person and the person will be like, oh, I don't understand how, like, how would the, the um, direct correlation between um, like what the like this and then the, the, the larger theory. <laughs> and it's like, well, I mean, I can't paint and, and put uh, every single step forth within that for you. Um, and then within the larger theory, the larger theory is, again, not just like some random dude spouting off nonsense as to picking out a theory out of a hat. It's uh, all being investigated and proven out. I get Logitech, MIT, uh, Princeton, Stanford, like, name an institution. It's like this is... Um, what is the most cutting edge research uh, in these areas overall? I didn't do it. Like, again, like I understand it sounds like voodoo if you don't understand anything about these things, right? Like it's the most like crazy concept in the world. Like if I were to like put a scale as to like what I thought reality was and, and like, uh, or, and how like this, uh, fits within it and how the models learn. Like if, if I were to like put money onto and make a bet as to uh, my assumptions as to how the models are learning and learning within this. And I, I made like a, a 10 year old bet. I, I'd be broke. Like I'd, I'd have lost all my money. Like uh, that's kind of just the, the, the um, bottom line within this overall, right? I wouldn't have picked this method and like I, I can't explain that enough right like it's like uh this method how this breaks down what this does how this works um isn't a method that i would have uh thought would work would not have chosen and i wouldn't choose uh for this to be uh within the models overall i was like i mean i i, I can't uh make that more like uh apparent within that right like, like uh this like being within the models and feeds into like why the models aren't like um controllable right if you want control over the models you don't want this uh being in the models and then so it's not a feature that i would have picked to be in here <laughs> like um it just is and then so if it's in there you can't really get rid of it and it's the way that i mean i 
nature finds a way. Uh, and then so uh, within that, like diving um, deeper into the actual like example and like implementation of this, I like to look at So I like to, when I take a paper like this, I like to uh, break it down and, and look at like the actual code uh, and what the code would look like in this instance. So in this instance, this is an example because I'm not like there, the, uh, as I stated up top, <laughs> you're taking a full LLM model and then you're going through like the full training process. You're just doing like a dual training. So I'm not going to do that, right? Because you have to fully train the encoder and the decoder. Uh, but I, I can like give a simplified example of that. So in this instance, I have a simplified encoder and a simplified decoder, uh, right? And then so just, uh, and then it's, they're just like, um, very simple, like neural networks. Um, and then, uh, I have, then you have the combined encoder and the decoder. And then from there, we get our deep learning network, which is, you know, just number of parameters. And I have my, uh, this is uh, all for like the training. So number of epochs, learning rate, um, then I instantiate the model, loss function and the optimizer, which is important within this, right? So this is all based off of the loss function. So stochastic gradient descent, it's all like nothing changes within this. What happens is, is that like, uh, this process stays the same. I'm just moving it to inside of the encoder, right? I'm moving it so that this is being trained via this. And that's all that's going on here. Like, so it's, it's, uh, it's not more complicated than that. Right. And then, so like, uh, like this is being trained by this. <laughs> and then so like, uh, why does like, why has no one ever done that before? And, and like, what is the significance within this? Uh, the significance is, is that like, this is all fake. It's all imaginary, right? It's all, uh, so this is stochastic gradient descent. Like, so it's, uh, the, the, like, rather than a data set, you're just taking snapshots of this that are learned from the model and then you're just shooting those into the model and then you're having the model just try to accurately reconstruct this so like you're taking the platonic form of the data set and then having the model try to estimate and then utilize stochastic gradient descent on the platonic form of the data set and then you do that 100 times and then that's the, like that's the full training process. Like you're not ever touching the actual audio in this instance, the actual data set. Like there's like never, ever, ever is it touching this, <laughs> uh, except for in like so in phase one, right? And in phase one is when you just do your straight normal, uh, like stochastic, like your your normal training, right? Like like overall training, you're training off of the data set, so it's you're you're just like um, your pure data, like stochastic gradient descent off of the data you have your back propagation and optimization etc so everything with phase one is is exactly like normal phase two so you're you're taking that like that phase one is what gets you to platonic form land right so then whatever your your um end result is from phase one, that's what then gets fed back into and, and is your starting point for phase two. And then so uh, epoch one for phase two is trained 100% off of like epoch 500 or whatever it is from phase one. Uh, and then that's your, then it, it deviates and deviates and deviates from there and then it becomes its own thing, right? Especially like by, by epoch 100, it's, it's just totally different. And then uh, your end result is just like a, a typical training phase, uh, a, exactly like you would see, right? But except for that, this loss is again 100% encompassed within the encoder itself, and then is 100% based off of the uh, like the, the, like so it's based off of the the results of this, right? So you're just shooting the results of this and then moving it forward, and then that becomes this. And then this is just um, multiple iterations of that, like multiple generations removed from there, essentially, of this. And then so it's all fake starting here, right? Like all imaginary, not real. Um, and then so that's uh, the method here overall model as a loss, a self consistent training paradigm. And then so like, again, like I like, I've had enough discussions around this now. I understand uh, at this point, like it's um, uh, 
cutting edge physics and mathematics overall, right? Uh, look at the physics of digital top, like digital topology of geom and like geometry and digital topology. Uh, investigate those two things and those concepts and start there. Uh, research around it. Uh, if I could compile probably like a, a list of uh, papers around it. That might be a good thing to do, like a, a resource, a good resource and starting resource. So I'll probably do that in a future video um, here. But so here we have a model as a loss, a self-consistent training paradigm. I'll leave a link to both this research paper uh, as well as uh, this collab notebook so you can see it uh, in like a code form as well as that, that, that you're a learner like me that likes to look at it that way as well. Um, and then so uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.